English settlement, Portland was named by Lieutenant James Grant after George Bint Bintinic, Duke of Portland and Secretary of State for the Colonies. Portland was initially a sealing station. About 200 sealers worked the seal colonies in the Bass Strait until the number of seals declined and whaling, whaling took over. The first European settler was a teenager, William Dutton. These are Dutton motors. Who visited the bay with a sealing gang in late 1828 and the following year returned to build a hut and grow vegetables for himself and the visiting whalers and sealers. In 1833, he established a whale fishery to boil down whale blubber and extract oil and baleen. At its peak, the fishery processed 280 tons of oil. Later that year, he was visited by Edward Henty, the son of Thomas Henty, a well-known merino sheep breeder in England, who was so impressed with the district that he established a house here in 1834. The Hentys also established a fishery and owned some 40 whaling boats in the bay. Spotters were posted at the lookout on the headland during the whaling system season. They would sound an alarm when a whale was sighted. Within minutes, dozens of boats would put to sea and the whale would be harpooned and towed back to shore. The blubber was cut out and boiled down in cauldrons. The industry declined, as did whale numbers, after 1840. No wonder. However, Portland's fortunes revived with the gold rushes of the 1850s as thousands of hopeful diggers landed here on their way to the fields. It was a bonanza for local business because the newcomers brought their goods and equipments in the port. Fishing has always been an, in, an industry of some importance for Portland. A large lobster boat fleet and a number of abalone boats are based here. Portland is still an important shipping outlet for Victoria as it is the only deep water port between Melbourne and Adelaide. Development of the harbour in the 1950s added to the jetties and piers that had been built over the years. Ships from more than 50 countries used the four general shipping berths, an oil wharf, an all-purpose bulk berth, a fishing berth, and a grain terminal. Portland's many historic buildings, including the Customs House, Watch House, Court House, and the Steam Packet Inn, tell much about its colourful past. Its population is 10,930, and it has the Dahlia Festival in March. Portland, we travel the 12 miles north to Hay Haywood. Alexander Bilston, Alexander Hayward Bilston, born here in the 1830s. I think he was the first white male child in Victoria. He's a direct descendant. Hayward, now an important sawmilling centre, this town was the first inland settlement in Victoria. It grew up around the Bush Inn, built in the early 1840s besides the Fitzroy River, which was the first resting place for travellers from Portland. A number of scenic drives from Haywood wind through forests of hardwood timber and fern gullies. Yes, it was the bush inn that the Bilstons owned. Of course, the old Bilston didn't believe in banks, and he swapped the bush inn. No, he, he'd, he'd uh, owned a lot of property and swapped most of it for the bush inn and kept the money in the, the uh, building. And when the building burnt down, so did his money, and so was the family fortune. Oh well, that's his life. One
Tempo. National Park. The deep long gorge of the Glenelg River in the lower Glenelg National Park 
is ideal for exploring by canoe or boat. Access is provided from several landings along the route. Boats can be hired from Nelson and a passenger ferry runs from Nelson on the coast to the Margaret, Princess Margaret Rose Cave. Caves. An important discovery of ancient animal bones was made some years ago in McEachin's Cave, another of the many caves in the park. The remains of thousands of creatures were unearthed, including those of the long extinct marsupial lion, the giant kangaroo, and the Tasmanian tiger and Tasmanian devil, now extinct on the mainland. Kent Brook Heath, to the east, is noted for its wildflowers in spring. The Great Southwest Walk passes through a significant portion of this park. These spectacular limestone caves are open for inspection each day. The Princess Margaret Rose Caves, one of the most attractive and accessible of the many limestone caves in this park, this complex has met as fine examples of stalactites and stalagmites. Dartmoor.